the work of Puerto Rican women, tell our stories so that we don't render ourselves invisible. We were here, we are here, and we will always be here to demand justice, take care of ourselves, and communities, and to celebrate and love fiercely. Nosotras dos estamos aquí muy complacidas para estar con ustedes hoy, y le damos la bienvenida para eh, la celebración de la mujer puertorriqueña del Día Internacional de la, uh, wait, I must stop, del Día Internacional de la Mujer del 2016. Me llamo Aide Morales y estoy muy orgullosa de estar aquí con mi hija Marcela. Once again, we just want to welcome everybody here. Thank you for being here to celebrate um, Puerto Rican women on International Working Women's Day. Yeah. My name is Marcela Morales, and I'm going to be here hosting um, alongside my mother. So, oh, thank you. Right. <laughs> so, lo que vamos a hacer es que vamos a hacer una invocación de nuestro altar, um, y entonces vamos a hacer el himno nacional de Puerto Rico. Vamos a hablar un poco sobre eh, el homenaje de Doña Delfa Vera, quien es ella. Y entonces vamos a comenzar los reconocimientos con música, con video, con palabras y con mucho gozo. ¿Estamos? So, we're, we're going to do the ancestral altar. We're going to sing the Puerto Rican National. We are all going to sing the Puerto Rican National. Anthem. You even got the words here, no excuse. Um, and uh, then we're going to have music and dance. We're going to talk about Doña Del Favera and her memory. And then we're going to do the awards and we're going to have fun. It's such an honor and such a privilege to be here. I asked myself today, when is it that we get a chance to take a moment to honor specifically Puerto Rican women? Yay! Yay! Accomplishments, our victories, our trials and tribulations, all of that together, today is the day. Um, with that, this ceremony has a focal point for all of us to center ourselves and ground our, this ceremony. And that's behind me, that's the altar that you see here. It's a community altar. And if you could just cast your gaze to the altar, what you'll see are the five elements of nature represented. Fire, earth, wood. I'm missing some. Air. Water. Air. Ether. In many different ways, in a lot of symbolism on this altar, beautiful flowers. Um, not too far away from here is Central Park and it's just beautiful gardens. And um, I tell my students sometimes when we have questions of moments that we have to talk about diversity, is that we don't go into a garden just to see one set of flowers. We go into gardens to see the, all the beauty that nature has for us. So, and then also as Aide and Marcela mentioned, these notes that you can, where everyone, that's why it's a community altar, can write to their ancestors to remember their ancestors. This is part of our formation of who we are and our identity, and it's a moment for us to honor that. And with that, I'd like to remember my grandmother, my paternal grandmother, Amalia Nevarez Maisonet, from Barrio Cupe in Rio Piedras, Puerto Rico. I was just there a few weeks ago, and my father recounted a story of what we call in our family the Great Escape, when my abuela uh, dash took my, my father and his two other brothers from Puerto Rico to New York, and she worked for several months at a sweatshop, just earning enough money to buy the, the tickets, and then my, my grandfather heard of the, the plan and thwarted her, her plan, but she still persevered anyway. She still, under uh, my grandfather, who would take the button away from the radio so that she couldn't hear um, during the day, and would, when he came home from work, would put it back in. But my grandmother would put uh, find a fork and twist it up and put it in the radio so she could listen to the radio all day long and without him knowing. But. Um, all of that to say is hearing that story recounted again reminded me of just how determined Amalia Nevarez Maisonet was. And I feel that the determination that I have in me is 
is part of my DNA that she passed down to me. And so with that, I invite you to be part of our community altar, to activate our altar with your intentions, with remembering your ancestors, your women, the people in your life that formed your identity. And we're just gonna popcorn that out. So just please, in voz alta, nice and loud voices, let it rip. See, present. Simpático, el ruido del caño, nosotros queremos la libertad, nuestro machete nos trae. a daughter, a sister, a mother, a grandmother. She was a revolutionary, a nationalist, a socialist, an activist. This was a woman that from the time that she was 13, 14 years old, fought for the independence of her country until she died when she was in her mid 80s. We're talking about 70 years of solidarity, 70 years of work, 70 years of sacrifice, 70 years of repression, 70 years of racism, 70 years of colonialism, 70 years of struggle. A woman that gave all of her life and all of her soul to her nation, which she considered her family. She considered Puerto Rico and all Boricuas, her family. She saw her nation colonized by the US and could not stand by and do nothing. She broke barriers. She was a woman that was a leader. She did not take the typical stance that women did in the movement. She didn't let patriarchy and chauvinism and sexism stop her from being the revolutionary woman that she was. That's why we in Pro Libertad dedicate our award to her because she's an extraordinary human being that most of the time, most people don't know. Most people don't know who this person was. And that's what we look at when we talk about Puerto Rican women. We know the Puerto Rican men. We know the Advisus and the Juan Antonio Correjes and all of those male names, but there's these sisters that did just as much and more that have contributed to our country, have contributed to our movement. So today we honor Adel Favera by giving the award to three women that are very much in the spirit of Adelfa. These are Adelfa's daughters, Adelfa's sisters. So brothers and sisters, when I say Adelfa Vera, you're gonna say presente. Adelfa Vera. Presente. Adelfa Vera. Presente. Adelfa Vera. Presente. This song that I um, have been invited to share with you today is a song that I wrote um, in honor of my grandmother, my abuelita Gloria who uh, was born and raised in Puerto Rico and then lived in the Lower East Side for 50 years. Um, she's since passed away, she's on the altar. Um, I grew up in Binghamton, New York, in upstate New York, and for me, uh, my grandmother, my abuelita would bring up, you know, the sofrito in the containers and stuff them in our freezer. And for me, you know, that, that smell is always a reminder not just of the food but also of our people. Whenever I smell sofrito, whenever I, I, I remember who I am and where I came from, you know, there's, it's, you know, it, it's a, it's a, our senses are really powerful. And so I thought I would sing this song that I wrote in honor of her evoking the ancestors 
with the intention that we must remember where we came from in order to know where we are going. Es el olor de mi fuerte hace 
truly honored and humbled to have been selected to uh, present this award to Sandra Hernandez's family who are here tonight. Um, it was the late 90s, which I say in the way my elders say, it was the 60s or the 70s. So I'm getting, getting there, and it was really wonderful to see some, uh, uh, how young Sandra really was all throughout her life, and dancing and with her face painted. So we were fighting Giuliani, who you might have heard of, and um, can I get a boo? And I think, I think his brother is the current mayor, but we were working to stop an auction of community gardens throughout the city and I was homesteading in the South Bronx on 136th Street but you know how it is you're a block or two away it's a whole other world in the city right with a whole different network of people and leaders and and representatives of what's going on so we were looking around and we were asked to start a garden by some principals in, in the neighborhood because the South Bronx then before was becoming the accordion district or whatever they're calling it. There was a lot of empty lots and Sandra had been working to get them cleaned up by Department of Sanitation and I know some people in this room used to be burning the trash in the streets to get some attention from the city. So I was told, you know, we wanted to organize people about transforming this site and they said, you gotta talk to Sandra, you gotta talk to Sandra. So everyone said, you gotta talk to Sandra and that's how we met. And right away she came to the site, she was like, all right, let's do this. And, you know, when you heard about Freedom Community Center just now, which served hundreds of, of young people in the community and adults and provided that vital after-school care so that people from the block could go to work, and that was all free. And it was a basement. I mean, it wasn't like this room. It was a basement that she was doing all this magical work from. And so we started the garden, we developed our relationship, and then, you know, being the kind of person I am, like, a tall guy. Uh, a lot of people in the neighborhood were questioning my motives and what's that white boy doing and all that kind of stuff. And you know, it could have got dramatic, but who to the rescue? Sandra Hernandez just squashed it right away just by saying, yo, I'm with him and this is a good project and we're going to do that. And here we are 20 years later working on a million dollar capital project thanks to her early work, having served thousands Thousands of young people, thousands of young people. I mean, the impact of one person, thousands of young people, numerous trips upstate to get out of the city that she spearheaded, getting the buses, getting the people from the block, and you know how it is to organize people, even for something wonderful. She would go out there and go get them. And she allowed a number of organizations like ours to have a, have a little office space to transform the neighborhood, to stop the pollution, to work against the power plants. And she also um, supported the Taino culture by supporting the United Confederation of Taino People and the programming that they offered there. So I'm sure I missed a million things, but I want to at this time invite some members of her family to come up to present an award to Suki, Bobby, Tanya, and Kathy, uh, please come up for the award. And in recognition of her Taino ancestry, before the family comes up, we have a gift from us, through Vanessa Tricoche, to Sandra. So if you all could stand. The, our people used to use the conch shell to communicate to the ancestors. So it's us communicating to her, thanking her. Her 
but I'm saying might be a little redundant because of all the beautiful words that were said before me. But uh, our mom was a woman who felt privileged for the opportunity to live two lives in one lifetime. One life of substance abuse and one full of overflowing love for family, for friends, and for her community. From the moment she changed her life from one to the other to the moment she lost her battle with cancer, a spam of only 15 years, she made a significant and everlasting positive impact on the lives of many. In her second life, she went from renting a room to getting an apartment to managing seven buildings to accepting delivery of a space that was the genesis of Freedom Community Center. This opportunity enabled her to assist underprivileged children, help parents with training and support groups, and raise the level of environmental con consciousness by reaching out to Mount Haven residents and public officials. Not only was our mom an activist, community organizer, and advocate, she was also a deacon at St. Peter's Church where she was laid to rest. It was her love of community and of people that gave her courage, incentive, and ambition to wake up every morning to fight often using her own money and personal resources. Eventually, she was able to secure grants that she assured went right back into her community. This enabled her to enhance services. By the grace of God, our mother met Joe Perez and Cherry Tree, an organization that wrote grants for small businesses. Through Cherry Tree, my mother was able to negotiate with abandoned property owners to develop community gardens to grow fruits, vegetables, and flowers. She would later marry Joe, who filled an important role in her life. Having a spouse and partner invigorated my mother's life and her work. In addition to being totally supportive of my mother's work and community, and community, Joe helped to expand my mother's view of the world and they traveled to places our mother never knew existed, never mind dreamed of visiting. Our mother Sandra was an amazing woman who led an amazing life. She lost her battle with cancer and passed at the early age of 55, expressing that her life had been fulfilled. She was happy about her life. She lifted herself out of the bowels of drug addiction to make a positive mark on her neighborhood and her community. The naming of the city street in her honor is indicative of her impact. The hundreds of people attending her service is a testament of the reach of our mother's love. She will never be forgotten and will, she will be loved and will never be forgotten. May you rest in peace, wonderful mother. <clears throat> My siblings and I would like to congratulate the other beautiful women being honored tonight for making a change in their community. Finally, we would like to thank Lillian and the organizing committees without whose help this event would have been very challenging. We love you, mom. We love, love you, mom. mom. SP is SP. She is the most perfectly imperfect person and human being in the world. And the first question I asked her is, why are you a revolutionary? And she said to me, I'm not a revolutionary. Che Guevara is a revolutionary. Fidel is a revolutionary. I've never been involved in that level of struggle. And I say, 55 years of struggle. Esperanza, you are a revolutionary and an inspiration to us. give a shit. She's going to stand up there, she's going to say it, and she doesn't care what you think. She's going to say it. And sometimes she states it in what I call hyperbole, and she says, our people are dying in the streets. And we're like, and then we're like, oh my God, you know what? In the essence of what she is saying, she's absolutely correct. She is absolutely analytical, she is looking at the political consequences of every decision that gets made in this city, in this country, in this globe. And she has this uncanny 
ability to be able to get to the grain of what exactly is happening. And so you sit there and you say, where did you get that analysis from? And then you sit there and you start to read and you say, oh my God, there is this woman who has this ability to be able to read what is happening throughout the world and bring it back into the communities. ESPY is the most, I don't use these words lightly, ESPY is the most extraordinary organizer I've ever seen. And I am... because she has brilliantly taken all of the aspects of her life, her spirituality, her pain, her consciousness, her humanity, she's a healer, she's taken it and she said, organizers are healers. When the hell did we ever hear that organizers were healers? And if it isn't about healing the world through organizing, then I don't know what it's about. So SB, she is my sister. She's the sister of my choosing. I love you. I've always resisted saying you were my mentor because I was so proud and full of shit. But I have to say it publicly. You are my mentor. I am I met Espy when I was in my 20s, young little chickadee. And um, I was suicidal and lost and thought I was crazy and some psychologist told me I needed to get on antidepressants. And uh, I, somebody said, you should see this woman in Esperanza. And I met her in a macrobiotic restaurant. And I was like, no, I'm not eating anything, thank you. <laughs> um, she asked me to write her a letter and uh, she had read it and she just went to eat her macrobiotic food. And I'm like, so about that letter? And she said, oh, there's nothing wrong with you, honey. Capitalism has you by the tits. <laughs> what? <sighs> so I was her student, and then our sisterhood evolved, and we're now peers, and we commiserate as women, as organizers, as mothers, and as all the other roles that we hold. But, um, you know, SP, we celebrate you because of your tireless work for our individual and collective freedom. You know, we hear you crush the state. Or maybe she says fuck the state. <laughs> crush patriarchy, crush capitalism. Viva Puerto Rico Libre. Free Oscar Lopez. Free Mumia. Free Leonard. But there are those of us who also hear you say, let go. <laughs> right there, all the way, from this moment on. Your work to transform <laughs> countless number of women of color through your model of emotional release has created an army of powerful change agents to transform our own lives, that of our families, our communities, and the planet. But there's a catch. You know, Espy, uh, Espy shows up for your life. You know, she does all the marches, and then she shows up for your life. And I remember when I had delivered Marcela, who's co-facilitating, and I had been in labor for 23 hours, and everybody, I had a by C-section, I was doped up on morphine, and everybody cleared out. The father was gone, my whole family was gone, and I was doped up, and all I could hear was Marcela crying for milk. And it was Espy who stayed beyond my family to bring my daughter to me so I could breastfeed her. So here's the catch, okay? It's hard to repay you for how you show up in people's lives and what you have done your entire life for so many others. When I ask Espy, what can I do? You know, she's clear. She's like, don't give me things. So I got, you know, she nearly ripped me a new asshole and I bought her an iPad mini. She was like, oh, I have to listen about Apple and all that shit. So she doesn't want things, right? She doesn't want things. She wants you to show up. She wants you to go with her to 33 Mujeres for Oscar. 34 women. She wants you to go to Plymouth Rock with her. She wants you to go to the Mumia demonstration with her. 
and she wants you to celebrate her too through your actions and through your undying, your unwavering stand for justice for your life, for your family, for your community, for your people and the planet. And that is no small ask. Because you gotta have a lot of integrity to do that. So she doesn't want things, she wants us to be a stand for justice. And today we celebrate her for all her work, but Espy's also approaching the end of her 60s. And so I would like for all of us to sing a very happy birthday right. to Espy. Yeah. Two 
2009 was when um, Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor was appointed to the Supreme Court, and that's when I gained a more public figure role model who shared my skills and passion for politics. 2009 was a very key year, key year for me, um, especially because the previous year, 2008, was when my grandmother passed away. Okay. And so while I joke around about J-Lo being my role model, um, I really must be honest and say the two role models in my life are the Puerto Rican women, Rosa Matos, my mom who's here. Hi, mommy. <laughs> So over the last um, couple of years, I've actually keep getting asked the question from my friends, from colleagues, and even from strangers, why am I the way I am today? And for the longest, I would just shrug and say, I don't know, I was probably just born this way. But after some deep reflection, the reason why I am this way is because I come from a matriarchy. It is because of my mom. I won't make you cry too much. Um, she raised me to be fierce, opinionated, and unstoppable. She always taught me to persevere through anything that comes my way, especially because I am a Puerto Rican woman and the society was conditioned to stop us, but she never wants me to be stopped. Thank you, mommy. Right. And then there's my grandma, Angelica Diaz, who passed away in 2008. She taught me to be loud and unapologetic. <laughs> and I must dedicate this award not only to my own mother, but to my grandmother who inspired me to become an advocate for transformative change no matter the barriers. She was an incredible leader in the South Bronx and always advocated for her community, for her family, and for her church. She worked alongside issues tied to housing and healthcare reform, and she volunteered on political campaigns and collaborated with the Young Lords. But due to the language barrier, due to her lack of access to education, due to her socioeconomic class, she could not dedicate her life to this the way I am now dedicating my life to these issues. And so that's why my mother and my grandmother are so important to me because they paved the way for me to be here today as a third generation Puerto Rican, being able to spend 24 hours a day fighting in the streets protesting, rallying, lobbying, screaming my head off, because if it wasn't for them giving me these access to resources, I would not have these privileges. And so to close, I want to share with you what it means to me to be a Puerto Rican woman. To me, being Puerto Rican means that I come from a beautiful place, though I have not seen it often. It is a place filled with orange flamboyant trees, the loud whispers of the coqui, and the rhythmic beats of the ocean dancing salsa. It means that my blood is Taino, African, and European, and I must not deny those three areas of my blood. It means to me that New York City is my home. The New York Cityscape is where I breathe, where I thrive, where I travel to every day from the Bronx, and the subway is my old junke. It's where I get lost, it's my maze, but I've learned how to navigate it. And to me, it also means that Spanglish is my tongue, my Spanish is awful, but I understand it and I'm working on it. And that's why I'm a New Yorican who speaks Spanglish. Yes. You go, mama. And to me, again, being a Puerto Rican woman means that I have all the power in the world that I will use for good and for healing. It means I have the ability to serve my community and my family and to carry on the legacy of my grandmother and to continue building power with my own mother every single day. It means I am unstoppable and it means I am proud. This award is to you, Mommy, and to Angelica Diaz. Presente. I've been putting together my manuscript for my book that's long overdue and going through journals. And in my journals that go back actually to 1985. And when I first met Esperanza Martel in, in the 90s. And I see a passage that says, I have so many Espy quotes. 
When you challenge the fear, it loses its power. Esperanza Martel. And I wanted to just share a quick story before I, I share my poetry. That I remember meeting Espy and being very young in my 20s. And Espy introduced me to a holistic health community, a, a community of women, where I was able to learn the tools and get the skills to save my own life. And who I am today is not who I would have been if I had not encountered Esperanza Martel. If I had not met Espy, I would have stayed in a conversation that goes like this, you are mentally ill, rather than we are suffering from a condition called internalized oppression. And we need to bring the whole shit down. Yes, smash the patriarchy. Vamos a destruir el patriarcado, coño. So this is for all oh, the story. I still didn't get to the story. So I am in my 20s. I'm in my 20s. I'm afraid. And I'm dealing with a lot of fear in my life. And SP, who was teaching me emotional release healing, in one of our sessions, says to me, and she starts tapping the wall. This is how we do it, mama. This is how we do it. I'm like, this lady is nuts, man. What is she doing? What is she doing? We test for weaknesses. Because I was like, SP, they, they have too much power. They have the weapons, they have the prisons, they have the military, we can never win. We test for weaknesses, mama, and that's where we strike. And that is a revolutionary woman. So, ¿a dónde está la, el revolucionario? ¿A dónde preguntas tú? Pero no preguntas sobre la revolucionaria. ¿Por qué pregunto yo? Recordemos, por ejemplo, nobles nombres como Ana Caona y la guerrillera Tania que se mató con Che. Y yo te pregunto otra vez, ¿a dónde está la revolucionaria? Como en los años 60, nobles nombres como la dinámica Iris Morales, la fenomenal Lolita Lebrón y la valiente Dilcia Pagán. Hay mujeres que se ven cara a cara con la muerte, como las mujeres en Chiapas, las mujeres viequenses y las mujeres con coraje en la diaspora, como Esperanza Martel. Y la revolucionaria, ¿a dónde está? ¡Presente! ¡Presente! frente de la lucha como siempre que el miedo de la muerte dicta nuestra valentía nuestras canciones y oraciones para un mundo lleno de justicia aquí estamos las mujeres y aquí está la revolución aquí estamos las mujeres con nuestras almas en consagración vivimos la causa con cada respiración con luz y poesía luchamos contra La deshumanización. So this is a song and this is for SP and for all of my sisters here in my, my circle sisters, my healing sisters, this is for all of us. For my mother, my abuel, my, mi abuelita, mis, mis antepasados, mis antepasados. <laughs> Anoche cuando yo dormí Volando con los ángeles, te juro yo oí la voz de una diosa. Anoche cuando yo dormí, 
volando con los ángeles. Te juro yo hoy los mandamientos de una diosa, la madre mía, pura santa, la todopoderosa, hasta BH, me dijo, hasta BH, te juro, hasta BH. Me dijo, despierta, mariposa, hija de la todopoderosa, hasta BH, levántate, hasta BH, tus hermanas te necesitan, hasta BH, ahora. Ata BH, les digo, Ata BH, vamos a destruir el patriarcado, vamos a terminar todos los abusos contra las niñas y niños, contra las bebitas chiquitas, contra las adolescentes, contra las madres y tías, contra las abuelitas benditas. Despierta mis hermanas, defiende lo tuyo, despierta mis queridas, defiéndanse en sí mismas, despierta mis hermanas, defiende lo tuyo, despierta mis queridas, defiéndanse en sí mismas, despierta mis hermanas, defiende lo tuyo, despierta mis queridas, defiéndanse en sí mismas, despierta mis hermanas, defiende lo tuyo.